What's going on everybody? This is Jake Berkey from Rock Rods, Busted Knuckle Films and Berkey Racing and today we're going to teach you guys a thing or two about tire balls. So what are tire balls? Well, these little fun bags right here are fantastic because they're military grade plastic inserts. They kind of look like a Ziploc baggie in a way and they've got a little inflator valve right there that go inside your tire. These things are installed in an array all the way around in a circle inside your tire and what happens is if you were to have a puncture, these create a run flat system, but that's not the only benefit. Let me explain something to you. These balls are all in an array. So if you were to take out that ball, basically all the other balls would expand to fill that gap and you would see a minute drop in the level of the tire, but it wouldn't go flat. So these are great because if you're off-roading and you get a puncture in the side of the tire, it's not gonna drop the tire all the way down. You might lose a little bit, but you have to eliminate a whole lot of these bags to be able to get a complete flat. Normally we run about 20 in your really big tires, like a 42 to a 44. You might run a little bit less in some other tires, you know, different purposes. But that's the great part about tire balls is you can actually tune them to your liking depending on how many balls you want and how, many, how much pressure and things you want. So what are some of the other benefits about these things? Well, they create an internal bead lock system. So in order to install a tire ball, you first of all have to have a single bead lock. But on the inside of your wheel, a lot of times that's not protected. So if you go into a corner, that inner bead is very prone to getting hit and bent back and then you lose your tire pressure. Well, with these, you won't have that problem because first of all, the tire is gonna be pushed all the way up on the inside of that bead and it's not gonna be able to be pushed back very easily. So it would be a very, very special rock that would have to come in there and hit just perfect on the inside of the wheel to be able to pull the wheel back and lose the air pressure. The other part is, who cares if you lose air pressure? You got tire balls now. So your wheel can get mangled up and it'll still run. That's fantastic because a lot of guys have double bead lock wheels specifically for that reason because they want to strengthen the inner bead. But if you don't have a single bead lock wheel, it's a lot lighter. So you can actually get a lot more horsepower out of your rig or a lot, more, uh, a lot less uh, stress on the drivetrain because you're running a lighter wheel and tire combination. So, the other thing that these things are really good about is you can run a really low tire pressure or basically a tire contact patch, but at the same time, you don't get any of the negative drawbacks. So if you ever watch some of the videos of us rock bouncers, you're going, what in the world are these guys doing? Why don't they have their tires aired down? Man, if they air down, they go right up that hill. We'll stop it because we are <laughs> we're pretty smart, right? whether you believe it or not. We know what we're doing, and the reason that we have a whole bunch of that tire pressure in there is because we're hitting ledges at 30 miles an hour. And if you don't have 10 psi in your tires, when you hit that ledge, the tire collapses down, it hits the wheel, it cuts the tire, and it breaks the wheel. So we have to run higher pressures because we're racing and we're hitting these big ledges. Now that's what's great about a tire ball. You can run a what looks like a low pressure in your tire, but it doesn't collapse. Check out this. When you hit an obstacle with a tire ball, the impact zone right there where the rock hits the tire is affected, but not the rest of the tire. So picture a normal tire, or I'll tell you what, Here's a great instance. You've probably seen the video of a woman who's standing on a bed and she's got a glass of wine on the other side. She starts jumping up and down on the bed and the glass of wine doesn't tip over. Well, basically that is the same concept of this. You have an impact zone right here, but you're not getting the pressure increase on the other side of the tire like you would in a traditional system. So what that means is that when you have that impact zone, these tire balls are getting a whole lot of pressure, but when they get off the obstacle, they just push out a little bit. If you didn't have that, the pressure increases exponentially and you get that rebound that you see, like if you have a regular tire in your shop and you pump it full and you drop it and it bounces like a Super Bowl, that's the same concept. You're gonna eliminate that with a tire ball. So it's a tunable suspension component. 
as you start playing with tire ball pressures and carcass pressures and the number of balls and all that stuff, you can actually tune your tire to the amount of rebound that you want whenever you hit an obstacle. So they are fantastic for that reason. The other reason that a lot of guys run a higher pressure is because when you enter a corner, if you have a large tire and it goes into a corner flat, it likes to roll over. And when it rolls over, you start pushing into the corner, especially with a spooled front end. Well, with a tire ball, you get a flat tire contact patch, and when you go into a corner, guess what? The tire doesn't roll nearly as bad. So you can run a big tire contact patch, low pressures, and you get the benefit of not rolling the tire, not cutting the wheels, or not bending the wheels or cutting the tires whenever you hit an obstacle. So these things are great for those couple reasons, and they're a tunable suspension component. So tire balls are fantastic for a number of reasons. Um, if you're trying to get on the podium and you keep on having issues with your tires, go with tire balls. You won't be disappointed. These things are great. I've had them, my personal experience, for about six months now. And I went from cutting tires left and right to I actually punctured a hole in my tire, had no idea whatsoever. I got it back to the house. I was pressure washing it. And as I'm pressure washing it, I see this little flap of rubber move out of the way. And I went down there and took a look. I could stick my thumb through the side of my tire and had no idea that I had even punctured my tire. So there's some personal experience for you guys. Uh, check out the video. We're going to go into some of the installation and all that stuff, but here's the theory. I hope you guys liked it. All right, now that we've talked about some of the theory as to why tire balls are a good idea for your rig, I want to show you how to install them. The first thing you should do is just take the tire, lay it on the ground, and then you need to prop up the rubber so that you have a clear reach inside the tire. What I did is I just took a couple pieces of wood and stuck them inside here. Uh, the second thing that you're going to need to do is take these tire balls, they come flat like this for packaging reasons, and you want to air them up just a little bit to where they're, they're, they're just got a little bit of air in them, but they're not so big that they're bulging. So we're going to start doing that, and then we're going to put them inside the tire. Now, if you look, there's a little fill nozzle right here. That goes to this little nozzle right here that's going to go with, with the kit that you get from Berkey Racing to be able to fill these things up for your needles. That needs to be oriented up and off to the side so that whenever you come in from the side to fill these up, they're all pointed in the right direction. So let's get started. Now that you have all the balls installed inside the tire, the next step is going to be to put a little bit of pressure in each one so that they kind of have a little bit of pressure pushing away from each other. It should be very slight, but enough to hold them upright. And the reason is, each one of these balls, as they're sitting inside this tire, are going to be oriented basically up and down. And in order to get these needles on the valves, you're going to actually have to turn them at about a 45 degree angle. So we're going to get all these needles installed inside these valves. Once that's done, put a little bit of pressure, then turn them at an angle so that whenever these things air up all the way, the needles don't run over themselves and get caught. You can kind of see them grow. All right, we got all the tire balls sitting where they're supposed to go. We're going to start adding some pressure inside these. As these balls start to grow in size, a lot of times the needles will get run over by the ball next to them. That's why you put them at a 45 degree angle and that's why you orient them like that so that the needles are kind of facing outward and whenever the balls expand, they don't overlap. So we're gonna start putting some air pressure in there and check it out. All right, there we go. We're sitting at 18 PSI. 
Now I can tell you all that because every single tire and wheel combination is going to get a different pressure. And you're going to want to play with these things until you get them perfectly uh, the way you want them basically so that they gush enough but they don't roll over in corners and you can still take hits and get a, a deadening feel. Uh, the great part about tire balls is they're a tunable part of your suspension. So adding or subtracting balls and adding and subtracting pressures will give you a different reaction in the tire, a different rebound if you will. So it's a really awesome process. The next thing that we're going to do once we get our, our pressure all equalized and we're at uh, the pressure that we want is we're going to close these little valves that we have here so that the pressure doesn't leak out whenever you pull the hose. So you actually just clip this down and you'll pull them one at a time all the way around in a circle and it'll leave the pressure inside the, the balls. All right, then you start pulling them out, go very, very gently and pull out, making sure that everything slides out nice and even and that your valve's closed. All right, these balls inside your tire, when they're driving around in a circle, they're going to create a ton of friction. Well, to stop that friction from overheating the balls and causing them to pop and wear, we're going to use this specialty tire ball lubricant. We're going to put it all inside the tire, and that's going to make everything moist and lubricated so that when you're driving, you don't create a bunch of friction and cause these things to pop. All right, guys, the last step that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this tire and press it down by putting your beadlock ring on so that you can get the bolt started. So we have a press here. This one was made by Timmy Cameron Racing. You can get them from him. Or we've got the ones from the tire ball company right there on the website. You can check those out. We've got a couple different models. Take your ring, set it down, take your press. Now, I've seen people use all threads if you want to get by a little bit cheaper. You can sometimes get all thread to work. You just run all thread up the holes, then take your all thread and put your nuts on there and start working it down. I've seen people do that. This is a much easier way to do it though. Um, now that we've got everything squared away, we're using Acme thread here with a bearing. And we're going to tighten this thing down. It'll clamp the tire down and then we can get the bead lock installed. That's it, we've got everything compressed, get our bolts started for our beadlock ring, get all the bolts put in. Once you get that done, you just install it on your vehicle like you would any other wheel tire. All right guys, we've walked you through the entire process of how to install the tire balls. These things are awesome, man. You can take these things and beat on them. You don't get flats or anything like that. They'll give you the competitive edge if you want to be on the podium. Now, make sure you check out the rest of our Rock Rods videos. We've got a whole bunch of different tech videos to show you guys some of the tips and tricks of what we're doing. Make sure you subscribe to Busted Knuckle Films and Jake Berkey Ride Buggy. See you all out on the trail.